Welcome to this edition of the Ultimate Combat Experience. I'm Mike Stedman, joined as always by Phil Henderson. Phil, one of the coolest nights we've ever had on the Ultimate Combat. Here we've got Rico Rodriguez, one of the baddest men in the world, fighting for the Ultimate Combat. Who's he fighting? He's fighting Chris Gillian, Mike. This should be a good fight, but I'm so excited to see Rico fight. He's literally one of the top fighters in the world. MMA history, probably, and uh, when it's all said and done, his name will be up there, I'm pretty sure. Well, he's already up there. He's already been the UFC World Heavyweight Champ. He's trying to make his way back to that same level, and it all starts right here in the Ultimate Combat Experience. I can't wait for it! It's the Ultimate Combat coming right at you. Eight, seven, six. In your middleweight division, we got a couple guys that just fought a few weeks ago. But there was so much controversy surrounding what was going on out in Elko that they said, man, we want to get back and do this again on our own home turf. Who are they, Phil? We've got Jerome Hatch, Mike. You know, he's going up against Cole Rose, the headhunter. Cole Rose is upset. He thinks he got caught. He doesn't know exactly what happened in the last fight. He wants a chance to redeem himself tonight. And uh, that's not going to be any easy task going up against Jerome Hatch. I'll tell you, anybody who's fought Jerome Hatch, they say, like, my bones hurt for weeks. That guy hit so hard, but uh, Cole Rose has a short memory, apparently. Middleweight Knowles Bar, check it out. Either a short memory or just a, an overabundance of pride, Cole Rose not happy about the way things wound up in the last time these two face each other. But Chavez, Jerome Hatch, man, he just kind of, he kind of laughs about it. He makes a joke about it. He says, you know, man, I'm just going to keep beating you guys up. You keep going and training all you want. I'm not going to train. I'm going to beat you up. 5'11", 185 pounds out of Provo. He is the one, the only Chavez. Yes, he is, Mike. But he's going up against the headhunter. The headhunter is focused. I think Cole was focused for his first fight. I think he took Jerome a little bit lightly, and uh, he paid for it. Now, I don't think I've ever seen Cole Rose step into the cage with this much grit and determination. Five foot, 985 pounds. He's just mad, and he's not mad at Jerome Hatch. He's mad at himself, and I think that's what's going to be the difference in this fight. If he can turn it around, he's taking that and channeling it in a good way. Yeah, and he really does have to do that, Mike. Uh, coming off a KO loss to someone just a few weeks ago, it's got to mess with you. Yeah, it sure does. You got to know that can happen again right here. You see how it happened. These guys both swinging for the fences. When you do that, somebody's going to land one and somebody's going down. Cole Rose trying to choke out Chavez. He's not going to try to get into this slugfest like they did last time. He's trying to end it fast. Yeah, he's uh, using uh, his mix in the mixed martial arts this time, Mike. Oh, and uh, trying to wrestle and do a little bit of jujitsu instead of just uh, brawling out and uh, so far he's got uh, Jerome Hatch in a pretty bad spot. He's got him in a bad spot. He's made him pay for ducking his head down there because he's fed him three or four pretty solid knees. He continues to work for that choke but uh, I think yeah he'd be better off doing that right there looking to, to uh, get those big strikes from up top and now he's trying to take the back of Jerome Hatch. Yeah, you see how strong Jerome Hatch is, Mike. He just grabbed Cole's hand and uh, held it there, and Cole couldn't get his arm free. Yeah, that Jerome Hatch is freakishly strong. You see him winding up right there. He had a flashback in the last fight, looking to end it with that big right hand, just missing the chin of Cole Rose. And that might have been a bit of a wake-up call for Cole, saying, wow, maybe I had a, you know, <laughs> blowing a kiss to him is Jerome Hatch. This guy kills me. Oh, he's one of the best characters in the show, <laughs> bar none. Their whole clan, you know, they're right down to his girlfriend or wife winning every contest contest we've ever done in the show yeah you know but uh can you imagine being the parents of these hatch brothers all oh, those guys were little hellions i imagine and uh boy they're, they're really taking it out here in the cage beating up people on a weekly basis man these guys fight all the time now cole rose got his hands full with the very strong jerome hatch 
Guaranteed, Mike. The principal at their school had the Hatch uh, phone number on speed <laughs> dial. Guaranteed. Probably had the shape of their ass tattooed on their paddle, too, man. No no doubt about it. Cole Rose looking for that big knee, but that's what Jerome Hatch does. He kind of plays possum on you, and he throws that big right hand, and he's just barely missed that thing on a number of occasions early on in the fight here. Hey, Mike, you see Cole Rose actually Ooh. using his footwork, setting up his shots, listening to his uh, corner, the <laughs> famous, the killer, Sal Sanchez. A little and, John uh, going on between these two as well. A lot of talking going on out there. Well, I think Hatch is trying to lure Cole back into Hatch's game, which is this, brawling and, and just, you know, throwing toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Oh, he wow. caught Cole there. He did lay one on him right there, landed it right on the button. You saw Cole Rose's head snap back, and you see the power that Jerome Hatch puts behind those uppercuts. That body shot looked like it hurt as well. Yeah, pound for pound, Jerome Hatch is right up there with uh, the toughest, or excuse me, the hardest punchers in uh, the UCE. But uh, oh. Cole, uh, Cole using a lot of tools in his tool shed this time, not just trying to throw toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Landing two big knees right there with Jerome Hatch pressed up against the cage. Those things landed very solid, but Jerome Hatch punching over his shoulder. Look at that right there. Cole Rose using a foot stomp. Oh, Sugarloaf must be in his corner too, Mike. Must be so proud. All right, here we go. Uh, he made it through the first round. Uh, you know, got five seconds to go. This has got to be a mental victory for Cole after their last fight. If nothing else, and right there, finishing the round with just kind of a nudge to the mat uh, with Jerome Hatch. And I think that's a good thing for Cole Rose to finish on his feet with his opponent down on the ground. You can see right there that uh, Jerome Hatch took a little exception to it. And that's a good thing, sending back to your corner a little bit mad. Yeah, sometimes, Mike, when you, uh, whoa, who's that? Well, that's our new ring girl. I don't know her name, but who cares? She's round number two. We got more of this stuff when we come back. Welcome back to the Ultimate Combat Experience. If you're just joining us, you missed round number one, which is a rematch between Cole, the headhunter Rose, and Jerome Hatch. And it really was a lot like the first time these two fought. Both these guys doing just that, swinging for the fences and landing on a regular basis where they in the first round. You see right here, they just kind of picked up where they left off, Phil. Yeah, they did, Mike. But uh, difference between their first fight and this fight, Cole was actually using his melon besides to catch punches. A big take down right there. You're absolutely right. He certainly broke out a lot more weapons uh, from his arsenal in this fight. He was doing a lot of different things, not just trying to stand in the middle of the cage and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Jerome Hatch, which might have been a bit of a tactical error on his part. Yeah, Mike, and, uh, and Elko out at the hotel after the fight, I told Cole Rose, I said, you know, you live by the sword, you die by the sword, and uh, this is mixed martial arts. you got to use your other weapons and uh, start implementing them in your game. Said like a true samurai, Phil. Ninja. Ninja wow, that's, that's deeper than I ever thought you were able to get, but you got there, and apparently it's worked. Cole Rose is I, I used to watch a lot of something. Jackie Chan movies, Mark. A lot of kung fu movies? Yeah, Jet David Carradine? Oh, that's He's good tough. stuff. All right, well, uh, right here you see Cole Rose in the guard of Jerome Hatch. And remember not too long ago when Jerome Hatch didn't know what a guard was? Like two weeks ago? Well, it looks like he's got one. He's got a tight, close guard here, and he's not doing a whole lot with it, but he's got one. Well, these Hatch brothers, they don't train, for say, at a gym, Mike. I know for a fact they watch fights, they watch UFC, they watch DVDs, and they do train with themselves, and they do know what's yeah. going on. They don't have that attitude that none of that jiu-jitsu stuff works. They just have the attitude that I need to be at work rather than doing that jiu-jitsu stuff. So uh, very hard workers. These guys are iron workers. They work like 10, 12-hour days. They do this stuff for fun, and uh, you can see they're always having a good time right here, but it uh, doesn't look like it's as much fun on the bottom as it might be on the top. The Hatch is just glad and lucky that they can fight and not go to jail, Mike. They love it. That's the, that's the they beauty. They don't want to get in trouble. Well, Dave Sully said, said, I've seen enough of two sweaty guys rolling around on the ground. I'm going to stand you two back up on your feet. And Cole Rose ready to rock and roll. I like it. Jerome Hatch got a big smile on his face, too. Here we go. Swinging for the fences once again. He was swinging oh, for the fences. And, that uh, one he, landed. He connected there. And uh, sooner or later, though, someone that fights Jerome Hatch is going to throw some straight punches down the middle, not let him get away with keeping his hands Man, down. Man, easier said than done. You're going to throw that. Right down the pipe, he's going to come around with one of those big hooks and knock you on your butt, which we've seen him do so many times. It's just, uh, we, we mentioned this last week when he saw his brother fight. He's just so technically unsound that they're just, they're hard to prepare for and they're hard to fight because they're so good at what they do. Yeah, they are, Mike, and they have heavy hands and they throw heavy leather. They remind me of Big J. Didn't do anything pretty, but he hit like a truck. Yeah, you know? yeah, and, and I hate to say this, they're, they're really good, bad fighters. You know, they're good at fighting improperly, but they're good at it, and, and they've given fits to guys that are technically very sound. So I say you throw those down the pipe, and then you get cracked with those big hooks, and it really kind of seems all for naught. 
Oh, uh, oh, Cole Rolls fighting off the takedown. It gets on top here, and uh, he might have just stole the round right there with you that know, takedown. He just very well may have. I thought that was a pretty topsy-turvy round, back and forth, a lot of good action there. But Cole did wind up on top earlier in the round. He wound up on top to finish the round. I think, you know, Cole Rolls, again, Mike's scorecard means absolutely nothing. But I think he might be up two rounds to nothing. I think uh, I concur with you, Mike. He won that last round right at the end, in my opinion. All right, he's got some uh, good folks in his corner there. Sal Sanchez giving him some uh, last good words of advice to get out there and see if he can't pull out a victory over Jerome Hatch. Here we go, round number three. Dangerous Dave Sully said your referee getting us started for the third round. Well, what I really like, uh, Mike, is that Cole's made adjustments when Jerome Hatch comes in with that wild just punch at the front at the beginning of the round every round he's always done that Cole's countering it and making him pay for it finally well you know he might have heard you just a moment ago uh, because he was throwing some nice straight punches down the middle and beating Jerome Hatch to the punch he's landed a couple shots he's taken a couple shots as well though I'd like to see Cole Rose's defense get a little better have him move his head a little more than he has been in this fight well one thing's for certain Mike his defense this fight's a whole <laughs> lot better than his last well fight. he's still conscious isn't he yes he is well, and, then he's uh, made a vast improvement Going for the foot stomp there, and uh, Cole's definitely shown a lot more weapons tonight, Mike. Uh, he's still got a little ways to go, but uh, I think he's a little bit ahead on the scorecards yeah, here. You know, I think the difference between these two is that Cole actually did take that last fight as a springing off point and said, look, this is what I, I'm going to make some changes to my game. And Jerome Hatch said, you know what? I beat you once. I'm going to do it again. I'm not changing a darn thing. Well, you got to make changes. You got to make subtle changes if you want to improve. And I think Cole Rose has done just that. Yeah, he is, Mike, and uh, I think Cole, the difference in his last few weeks is Cole's been training like a man possessed with one thought on his mind, Jerome Hatch. I don't think Jerome Hatch has thought about Cole Rose at all. Have you seen Jerome's girlfriend? Yes, I don't want to think I, about Cole Rose I, at I, all exactly. either. Come to think of it, have you seen Cole's woman? <laughs> Neither one of these guys have any business being in the cage. They should be at home, but uh, Cole Rose or uh, Jerome Hatch finding out recently his little lady's pregnant. Maybe he's a little sidetracked. Who knows? But I'll tell you what, Cole Rose has come out here, and, and I think he's taken this fight. There's not much time left here in the third round, but unless something really crazy happens here, I think he's going to walk away with a very well-earned uh, vindication over the last uh, couple weeks. Well, don't forget Mike he's in there with Jerome Hatch and crazy things happens when Hatch Amen magic is in there baby so you well, never know you, you call you got me on that one that is for sure man you just never know what's gonna happen with the Hatch brothers but one thing I can tell you I can tell when Jerome Hatch is tired and he's tired underneath there and I don't know that I'm gonna see a whole lot of explosiveness coming out from underneath because he may have just resigned to the fact that you know what there's always a third time. We can always do this a third time. We got about one minute left, Mike, and you're right. Uh, but I think Hatch might be saving up for uh, hopefully the fight gets stood up or something, and he gets that one big, huge Hatch magic punch coming in. <laughs> well, you see some rabbit punches going on here between the two of them, and you're right. Uh, Dave's a guy that won't let him kind of hang out on the ground either. He'll stand him up if they don't get doing something here with uh, not too much time left in round number three. This was a very exciting match. It's unfortunate it's kind of ending on a bit of a lull, but it was a great match. Both these guys came out and put on a great show tonight. Well, they definitely gave 110%, Mike, and uh, I think Cole's going to walk away with a victory here. He's a uh, ground and pound in uh, Jerome. It doesn't look like Jerome's going to get up and get that uh, big bomb thrown. Now, you know, like I said, he was probably looking at getting stood up, and I think Cole might be doing, doing just enough to keep uh, enough action here to keep them from being stood up, and Cole Rose has got to feel good about this, but again, we've seen stranger things happen. You never know. When you let it go to the judges' scorecards, it's your fault. You didn't do enough to win a fight in the cage. Don't complain about scores. Well, one of our judges is actually Fabio, Mike. You never know what can happen. <laughs> he is a beautiful man. There's no yeah, doubt about it. Look at these guys, though. Uh, they've got a tremendous amount of regard for one another, and as well they should. These guys really, it, 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 again, they're not probably the prettiest guys to watch, but gut check time tells a lot about who you are as a person, and these guys both showed us a lot of heart and determination. Let's see what the judges had to say about it. amount of joy on Cole Rose's face. He's pretty happy about that. He was pretty tenuous as the scores were being read. I think he would have just been heartbroken had he not won that fight, but a very hard fight and well-earned victory tonight for Cole Rose. Celerity Investments. If you have a vision, we can assist. Go to investwithcelerity.com to find out how. Jerome Hatch, man, that was quite a fight. You got him quick the last time he fought. Tonight it was a three-round decision. What were your thoughts on the fight? 
Uh, he definitely came more prepared. You know, I underestimated him because, you know, last time didn't go so long. So, you know, not to underestimate anything. So same thing happened with Sugarloaf on the second one. But now I got a rubber match with both of them. So. Drum, we know you're ready to fight anytime, anywhere. Mostly, hopefully, always in the cage, not on the streets. But, uh, well, that does depend, actually. But what's your plans for the future? We'll probably see you fight next week, right? Yeah, if you guys get a fight, the one, uh, it'll actually come. So we got to get me and my brother one, though. We fight on the same nights. we got families and little girls we got to take care of. So it can't be, you know, every weekend coming out. But, uh, I mean, any time, you know, you guys want us back, all you got to do is give us a call. There's one thing we know, the Hatch Brothers, they'll fight anyone, anytime, anywhere. You guys prove that. Uh, great fight tonight, Jerome. Anyone you need to thank? Yeah, actually there is. Um, actually, I need to thank my brother, my corner man, uh, my girl, all the fans that come out. Sorry to let you down. You know, it went around in war. But, uh, and also I need to thank my mom. She's in the Utah State Prison. And all of her cellmates, they uh, wrote me about a five-page card with everybody signed it, saying they were fans. And uh, also my Uncle Steve in the state prison. Um, they wrote us another a card. They wrote me a card and told me how big of fans they are. Sorry to let you down, but I'll be back in here winning again. Great Clips is home of the $10 haircut. Also pick up $10 UCE tickets only at participating locations. Cole Rose, what a way to rebound off your loss to Jerome Hatch. What are your thoughts on the fight? Uh, that kid is tough. I uh, give him all the credit in the world. He's a lot tougher than I ever thought he would be. Um, the first time he got me, knocked me down. I wasn't going to let it happen again. That's why I tried to take it to the ground and stay to the ground as much as I could tonight. Tough kid. Everybody gets knocked down. It matters if you get up. That's what matters. And you definitely got up tonight, Cole. You, you fought a smart fight. You don't brawl a hatch. You got to pick them apart. You, they're, they're street fighters. They're brawlers. They know how to brawl. That's their main weapon. You picked them apart, used your brain, and got the big W. Anyone you need to thank, like those 95 people over there? Yeah, I got to thank my, my beautiful wife, all my fans. I sold like 80 tickets to the show. I got the best fans in the state. They're freaking awesome. They're going nuts right now. I got to thank Hooligan Tattoos, 5556 South State. Call them at 290-2614. I got to thank treacherousclothing.com. I got to thank uh, Creative Graphics for doing my shirt and shorts. I uh, get a hold of them at cgprinting.com. I got to thank Mike Stidham, the ultimate combat experience, Mr. Phil Henderson. Wow, that was a lot of fun. We knew those two were going to get in here and bang, and they uh, they got in here and banged. Yeah, but Cole Rose, he didn't brawl the brawler. He boxed out, wrestled out jiu-jitsu, the, the brawler in Jerome Hatch, and he used his head this time not to catch a punch but to win the fight. Well, he won the fight, and uh, I just can't wait to see the rubber match between these two personally because I know Jerome Hatch is going to go back and make some adjustments and come back and want to fight Cole Rose one more time. We got more of the Ultimate Combat. Don't go anywhere. In your welterweight division, we've got one kid who has been head and shoulders above the competition. Nate Girardi has just been destroying everybody. But uh, Dave Allred says, you know, I mean, I think I can move up and wait and give this guy a challenge. What do you think, Phil? Well, you know, Mike, Dave is at the top of the ladder. He's not the top, but he's up there. And uh, he thinks this is his night to prove it. And going up against Nate Girard, what better way to find out? Styles make matchups, and Dave Allred really thinks that he's got a strategy that's going to win this one. This is going to be a lot of fun. Welterweight Knowles Park, check it out. Now, we, we kind of touched on it a little bit, but what I really think is interesting about this is that Dave Allred concedes the fact that Nate Girard's a better fighter than he is, but he thinks he's got the strategy to beat him. But, man, it's not uh, very easily done. No, it's not. No one's done it, in fact, Mike. I don't think Nate Girard's lost a round in our show. He has, and 5'8", 152 pounds. And as you can see, this kid's in shape. They call him Nasty Nate for a reason, because he gets in the cage, and he gets downright nasty. Now, they call this guy pretty dangerous Dave Allred because he's not super dangerous. He's not even dangerous. He's kind of pretty dangerous. Mike, he was skipping to the cage. <laughs> he's 5'11", uh, 155 pounds, it says. I think they, these guys are fighting at welterweight, however. Uh, Dave Sully said, giving these guys some last minute instructions. And, you know, <laughs> he touching the gloves just ain't enough for the guy who skips into the cage. We're going to hug it out. Skip to the cage. That's all I can say, Mike. But uh, no, Dave has put together a game plan. He's actually had a little bit of a training camp to uh, to fight Gerard here, and uh, 
I think he's going to try and fight Gerard at uh, his weaknesses. What they are, we don't know because we haven't seen any weaknesses. I, he doesn't have Gerard. any weaknesses. See right there, he lands with such power. And then once he gets inside, my goodness, I, I, I think what we haven't seen from, from Gerard is see him go three rounds. And I think that's what Dave Allred is counting on, that if I can stick around, if I can hang around with this guy, then maybe I can do something. But you look at this, uh, Nate Gerard. He is just physically built like a fighter. He's got all the genetics, um, and, and boy, he's just got the skill to go along with it. Yeah, he does, Mike, and uh, the wrestling background. He's got all the tools, you know. Uh, Ultimate Fighter TV show, here Nate Gerard comes. <laughs> uh, I, I, would, I would say without any doubt in my mind that within the next uh, 12, 18 months, you're going to see that kid in an in a Ultimate Fighter episode, regardless of uh, where he winds up. I know he's moving to Salt Lake, and he's looking at uh, gyms right now, but this kid's got so much talent, he's going to be successful regardless of where he goes. Well, let's just hope if we see him in that show, Mike, he's just kicking butt, not breaking the house apart, because yeah. no one wants to see you that. Know, I'll, I'll tell you what, man, that's not Nate, Nate Gerard's style. He's not that kind of kid. He's, he's a classy kid. He's a gentleman through and through but you, you see right here he's just he's a true MMA fighter I mean the kids just built to be that guy yeah I think uh, Dave Allred's uh, doing an okay job here covering up and uh, I do like that uh, Dave Allred didn't really fight the takedown too much and he's very content to be in the guard here working for submissions and, and looking for Nate Gerard to make that mistake let me tell you Nate Gerard has not fought in the big show before and it's very uh, well within comprehension that he would get a little overzealous in trying to beat uh, Dave Allred and leave something behind and I know that that's what Dave Allred's thinking Dave Sice that's standing them back up on their feet but right there you see that right hand he's so sneaky with it and he lands it with re great regularity but but you're right Dave Allred concedes the takedown once again and just looking for position and looking for something that Nate Gerard may have left behind yeah he's looking for something but he's just eating some punches right now uh all red though mike in the short time he's been training very proficient at jujitsu he can use all of his tools in a fight a lot of guys are very good at jujitsu in the in the gym at the school and can't use any of it when they get in the fight well I, I think that's what is most remarkable to me about dave all red is how durable he is you know you, you meet him outside the ring and you'd never guess he's a fighter first of all he's just such a kind of a sweet genuine guy but then you know you mentioned he skips into the cage he's a happy-go-lucky kind of goofy kid you know? <laughs> but then he gets in here and he's so durable you know his jujitsu is good but he's able to fight through punches and elbows and he's still coming at you that's what i've been impressed with dave all yeah and uh, his determination too mike i mean the kid likes to fight he's he's not really a fighter i don't think he's ever been in a probably a unsanctioned match in his life you know he just he likes to get in there and compete and do good things but uh, so does Nate Girard and I, I think Nate Girard walked away with that round pretty handily. Well I was just gonna say round number one's in the books now you feel like Dave uh, didn't do quite enough to win that round but I think he may have done what he wanted to do he, he's taken Nate Girard out of the first round and now where do we go from here? Well we go to the second round Mike. Well I, the, the, the question is what do we do in the corner here? What adjustments do we make? Do we still try to kind of ride this kid, kid out? Do you think we try to drag him into a third round? Are we looking for submission? That's, that's what Dave Allred's got to really kind of resolve for himself here in his corner. Well, if I was in his corner, I'd have been hitting on that big rock clothing girl like myself, <laughs> actually. You probably would have, Phil. But I'd have the digits, baby. I'm telling you, Dave Allred has a beautiful girlfriend, Celise, and uh, she's sitting here ringside watching this fight. Unfortunately, seeing him take a couple of pretty big shots right there, and uh, boy, Nate Gerard is so good at that, throwing those punches, which set up that body lock. And once he gets in there, boy, it's just so tight. You're not, it's not, get, you're not getting out of that. Nate Gerard is so hard to stop from clinching in on you. It, it's almost impossible. I'd really like Nate. Here's some advice, Nate. I'd really like to see him get a little bit of that couture style fighting. And when he gets the guys up against the cage, beat them up on the cage instead of throw them to the ground, because no one can stop him from clinching with them. No well, one. you know, I, I think maybe strategically though, he's thinking about, uh, you know, how do we counter? what Dave Allred's trying to accomplish. And I think he's done a very good job so far. Both these guys have kind of stuck into their game plan. And, and really, it, it's one of those fights you're going to have to see the end of it before you know if the game plan was successful or not. Yeah, and I, well, I know from talking to Dave before the fight and training with him a little bit, this is where Dave wanted to be. He wanted to be in the fight in a clean position, trying to get a guard or half guard. Not like his last fight with uh, Steno, Dan Stenovich, where he was kind of all over the place and he got beat up in positions that aren't really positions. Yeah, I don't think Dave needs to try to force anything. And really, I, what he's looking for is for Nate Girard to, to leave something behind, to give him that window. And, and uh, he's not trying to play to the judges. He's not trying to win rounds. He's looking at trying to submit uh, Nate Girard. That's my guess anyway. Uh, and so far, he hasn't been able to do it. And now he's fully mounted by, wow, by Nate Girard. Wow, not too many people fully mounted uh, Dave Allred, Mike. Uh, that was a beautiful move. And uh, Girard's hips 
He's just so powerful, just so powerful. He's powerful, and you see how what good balance and good hips he has. I mean, he's able to maintain that position. Dave Allred making things difficult for him. Right, you're trying to come out the back door. But, uh, boy, Nate Gerard not giving that up too easily. Whoa, we got the <laughs> rare right. donkey guard, Mike. Wow, unbelievable. Looking for a toe, uh, uh, footlock there, but didn't quite get it in time. He did have the donkey guard. I love it, Mike. <laughs> He's upside down here and looking for something. Nate Gerard not wanting to give that up. And uh, you see he kind of sensed that and, and getting around on uh, Dave Allred. Dave's still looking for a knee bar or something. But, boy, those that's the great equalizer. Punch a guy in the face, and that'll stop his... Uh, jiu-jitsu offense yeah it sure will mike and uh look how strong gerard's legs are he i mean dave already had that and he just uh -uh, not yeah. happening not today oh you're trying to knee bar an oak tree and that's probably easier said than done we got about 30 seconds here mike and uh, i think uh, allred's got to turn up the pace here because uh Obviously, Gerard has this round in the books. Well, once again, I don't think uh, Allred's trying to win rounds. I think he's he's just looking for an opportunity to beat this kid with a submission, and so far hasn't been able to get it. Nate Gerard sticking to his game plan very successfully. He's overpowered Dave Allred. He's out wrestled him, and he's just out positioned him thus far in the fight. And round two now is in the books. Allred just kind of shaking his head in disgust here, but I, I really, again, I don't think he expected anything but this. Uh, right now, he's going to have to make some uh, decisions. How is he going to try to win this? Lots of stuff to think about here as we go to commercial round three when we come back. Welcome back to the Ultimate Combat Experience. If you just joined us, boy, you're missing a great fight between dangerous Dave Allred, pretty dangerous Dave Allred, and nasty Nate Gerard. Very good uh, chess match, but Nate Gerard clearly winning rounds one and two on both mine and Phil's very unofficial scorecard. Dave Allred looking for something here in the third round to try to, to turn things around. Mike, I actually lost my uh, scorecard at the end of the second round looking at those uh, Big Rock clothing girls. <laughs> Feels so easily distracted, but uh, you see right here, uh, stand up is not um, Dave Allred's forte either. He, he and his cohort, Oliver Bradstreet, used their stand up to set up a takedown. But boy, what a great wrestler this Nate Gerard kid is! That's not going to work on him. Yeah, kind of hard to set up a takedown with a guy who's uh, eons better than you in wrestling. But yeah. oh well, I, you well, know, I, I just opened my big mouth and. Uh, yeah, Dave I don't got to take that. I don't think he is eons better than uh, than Dave already. He's certainly eons more experienced, but I think Dave, he's gotten a takedown or two in this fight. And he's done a pretty good job of holding his own in the wrestling wrestling game. And, and that's a, that's saying a lot for a guy who's fighting uh, nasty Nate Gerard. Oh, he's got a head and arm guillotine here. It looks like uh, Dave's in, in trouble, Mike. His arm doesn't oh, appear. You see his eyes kind of glazing over there, don't you? Oh, he's turning purple and uh, well, Gerard's got this on tight. We've never seen Gerard on his back before, Mike. That's like a groundbreaking moment in the show. Well, it sure is, but I'll tell you what, what a lot of heart Dave Allred showed right there. Man, that took a lot to, t he's digging deep. I tell you, his eyes were glazed over pretty good there, and I, I'm really, really impressed with that. Wow. And that, that's Nate Gerard, you just did that. And those strong arms, you finally got your head out of That was very, very impressive. He must have been just thinking happy thoughts, Mike, and got out of there. <laughs> happy thoughts. Whatever it was, it worked. And now, as you mentioned, this is the first time we've ever seen, uh, first of all, it's the first time we've ever seen Nasty Nate in the third round. And secondly, it's the first time we've seen him on his back. So can Dave Allred do what he's got to do to pull this one out? He's behind on the scorecards big time, but he's got position. I think Dave's got to look for a, uh, try and look for a leg lock here, not try and uh, pass and let uh, Gerard scramble. That's where uh, wrestlers get back up is when guys go and try and pass too much on them. They get up, they stand up, and, you know, they're in different positions. Oh, well, you know, he, Whoa, he, beautiful. Wow, he is looking for that ankle lock, and he looks like he might have that thing on, Phil. Oh, he's got an inverted heel hook. This might be, we might be seeing something happen here, Mike. This might be like the, the Patriots going down or something. This is exactly what Dave Allred has been looking for, and Dave Gerard is in some pain. Oh, this could be one of the bigger upsets of the year, Mike. Wow, this is why inverted they, heel hook. This wow. is why MMA is the fastest growing sport on the planet. It's so exciting. You just never know what's going to happen. Right there, Dave Allred relenting on that. It looked like he had it, but man, Nate Gerard, once again, a moment ago, I was said how impressed I was with Dave Allred. How impressive was that for Nate Gerard to suck it up and get out of that? Wow, an inverted heel hook. I'm a little bit surprised that Dave so instead stood him up on that because they just kind of finished a, a sub attempt. But uh, they stood him up and Nate Gerard finishing things with a nice takedown to round things off in round number three. Great match, though. 
Awesome match, Mike. Dave waited that whole fight for that heel hook, and uh, he had it. He almost added his name to the New York Giants and the <laughs> Kansas Jayhawks, the biggest upsets of the year, but not quite, didn't quite pull it off. Well, let's see what the judges have to say. The third judge is the way I saw it. Three rounds easily to nothing. Nasty Nate Gerard should have won that uh, by unanimous decision, but kind of strange judging we've seen tonight. But nonetheless, the right man wins, and uh, walking away with a big win tonight is Nasty Nate Gerard. Addiction Motorsports has the baddest choppers on the planet. Check out their new showroom at 187 South Mountain Way Drive in Orem. Dave Allred, man, that was a great fight. You came up a little short. You almost had the heel hook, though. You were waiting and waiting, and you went for it. You almost had it. Yeah, I tried to time it when he's a little more tired. He's a tough guy, he thought, uh, fought through the pain. I really thought I had that sunk in. And as far as the fight goes, you know, he was a lot busier those first two rounds. I was uh, trying to work bottom game on him because he's just so big. It's a bigger weight class than I fight, and there's a reason for it. These guys are big and tough. Yeah, that's for sure. I mean, Nate Girard, he's going places. But I think you are too. That was a great showing for you tonight. Um, even one of the judges, had you win in the fight? Does he have a beer? Sorry, brother. I didn't think you won, but it was a great fight. You almost had him. What's your plans for the future? I saw some of those uh, high desert hitmen over there eyeing you earlier. Well, uh, I think I need to take a little bit of time off. I'm co-hosting the show. I really want to thank all the fans for coming in. We would not have a show without you, so give yourselves a round of applause. All right, Dave, anyone you need to thank, buddy? Uh, yeah, I got to thank a few of my sponsors. Got to thank Skull Candy. Also have to thank uh, Big Rock Clothing. They have the nicest clothing ever. Check them out. It's on 1003 West and 3160 South. They are the best clothing, good prices. They can make ugly bastards like me look pretty. There is only one place to get all your favorite MMA gear, including UCE merchandise, and that is Against the Fence. Nate Gerard. What type of shape you're in, man? There's not an ounce of sweat on your body right now. You just went through a three-round fight. Very dominant performance tonight. What were your thoughts on the fight? Uh, well, I won, so I think it went good. A little out of shape. I think it showed I wasn't prepared like I normally come. Um, but I'll be prepared next time. <laughs> How close was that heel hook? He had an inverted heel hook on you. It looked pretty close to me, but uh, I was checking out the Big Rock Clothing Girls. I wasn't paying attention at that point. I felt it slipping at first, but when it slipped, it, he had that knee bar. And the knee bar, I felt a little bit, but I felt it slipping, so I wasn't too worried. I was a little worried, but. That's the first time I've ever seen you taken down in a fight, though. You were taken down. I was, I was what, what, what was that? Like I say, I wasn't able to prepare. I've been in Fiji. I just recently got married to Jamie Gerard. Oh, that explains it all. He just got married. So I had to take a little time off, so a little out of shape, just a little. All right, anyone you need to thank, Nate? Uh, Jamie Gerard, um, all my family who came, my friends who came, uh, my corpsman, Russ, and Brian. I appreciate it. Thank you. Very interesting fight. We knew that one was going to be fun, and it definitely delivered. Yeah, it did, Mike. Uh, Dave Allred got Nate Gerard to fight into his game, and he almost pulled up the upset. But this isn't horseshoes or hand grenades, and almost doesn't count. Nate Gerard walked away with the W, but I think Dave really made an example of how good of a fighter he is. No, I think he certainly made a statement, and I know that he's made got one believer now in Nate Gerard to says, hey, this kid is the real deal. But Nate Gerard, man, he's the best there is. We got more deal with my combat. Stick around. Rico Rodriguez, Suave. Rico Suave is fighting here in the Ultimate Combat Experience, Phil. I am personally so excited I can't even stand it. You name it, Mike, he's fought in it. UFC, Pride, WEC, everything. He's fought in it and won Abu Dhabi. I'm so excited to see this guy fight tonight. I don't, I don't even know what to say. He's going up against Chris Gillian, the Iron Man. Should be an interesting matchup. 
But I think everyone's here to see Rico fight tonight. I'm telling you, I've had a chance over the last few days to get to know this guy, hung out with him, man. What a class actor. What a great ambassador of the sport. Now we got to see what he can do inside the cage. It's your main event heavyweights. Check it out. You know, this, this is an opportunity fight for me. And, um, you know, you don't, you don't get nowhere if you don't take chances. So I'm taking it. I'm excited to come out here. Uh, I, I've seen your show. I saw the production. I'm really excited about it. I'm happy with the commission and the way they're doing the sport really well. And I'm just excited to be here for the fans. I mean, look at look at all the guys that are coming out for this little, uh, you know, press conference and just seeing the weigh-ins and giving a lot of support to all the fighters. So thank you. You know, I was training for another fight and it fell through. So I'm in excellent condition right now. Um, I'm in good shape. I'm I'm ready for a fight. So, you know, I'm I'm just ready. You know, just just being in the game for a long time, you know, I've trained with, you know, God, I just ran into one of my guys I used to train with about 10 years ago. I mean, just, you know, this sport is built on all the fans. We started doing jiu-jitsu, started wrestling. You know, guys came from boxing, guys came from karate. I mean, really the fans, including myself, you know, we made the sport and it's just blowing up. And then having guys like you promote it and doing a good job and it's just, it's blowing up. So I'm the guy that just, ha I've been having fun my whole career and just love what I do for a living. It's 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 a rush. It's exciting. It's it's a lot of fun hitting people. It's fun getting hit. Um, I don't know. You might be a little weird to say it like that, but I, I enjoy it. You know, if, if you don't enjoy, it, you know, don't do it. You're gonna see exciting fight. Now I, I'm just happy that the fans are coming out. Win, lose, draw. We're gonna have a great show, and I'm sure someone's getting knocked out. Not me. Phil, I, you know I'm not starstruck very easily, but I literally got chills right now. We got. The man, <laughs> the man coming out first, Rico Suave Rodriguez. Uh, what a cool guy and what a great representation of the sport and, and how great has it been to be around him the last couple days and watch him do with the media and that kind of stuff. Uh, what a great uh, spokesperson for mixed martial arts and here the ultimate combat experience. Oh yeah, he definitely is, Mike. At one time, Rico Rodriguez, the top of the mountain, UFC champion, and uh, he wants to get back there. I'm telling you, Phil, having spent the time that I did with him the last few days, he will be back there. He had some rough patches in his life, and those rough, rough patches have made him nothing but better. And at six foot four, 265 pounds, this guy is a handful for anyone. Yeah, he is. Uh, he's going up against the Iron Man. This is no pushover here, Mike. Chris Gillian has some big wins. He's uh, knocked off uh, Wes Sims twice. Not once, but twice. And, uh, that's no easy task. Now, he's beaten some uh, pretty top of the food chain fighters. He's no bum by any stretch of the imagination. He's uh, got ties here to the Utah area. He lived here for a short time in the southern part of the state. He's excited about the opportunity. He says, you know, I beat the former world champion, and that could open doors for me at six foot two, 240 pounds, training out of there. Scorpions Lair in Amarillo, Texas. This is exciting, Phil. It's exciting. Oh, this is Mike. Uh, Rico, Rico Suave Rodriguez. Who would have thunk it? Who would have thunk it, Mike? <laughs> Who would have thunk it? Uh, yeah, this is the biggest moment in UCE history, no doubt about it. Right here, a touch of the gloves, and the man, the myth, he's going to get things started here. Taking a leg kick to get things started by Chris Gillian. Oh, he is, but he's in on a, a shot here, Mike, and he has Gillian down to the ground, and this is not where Gillian wanted to be this early in the match. No, fight. you sure don't want to be underneath the former world champion this early in the match, and he got away with a leg kick to start, but I guess, you know, you can't do things twice to a guy with this much experience. Rigo Rodriguez very cagey and uh, caught that second kick and took him down to the ground. And really for a big man, Mike, he's about as experienced on the ground as you're going to get in the world. He's He's beaten Couture. He's armbarred Noguera in Abu Dhabi. There's no one he hasn't really went up against. Yeah, he, you know, he's beaten Andre Arlovsky. He's beaten some of the biggest names in mixed martial arts and jiu-jitsu, as you mentioned. And, boy, I, it's got to be kind of, well, it's got to be very intimidating for Chris Gillian to be underneath the guy that you can tell. He knows how to use his weight. Right here, getting a big reversal, though. Yeah, he got the big reversal, but uh, I think uh, Rico's trying to set something up good for the fans here. You know, he's so about the fans and just putting on a great show that, uh, you know, he, he is one of a kind. You kind of get kind. that sense, don't you? You kind of feel like he's just kind of biding his time and he's going to do something fantastic. Uh, you know, Chris Gillian, as you mentioned, he's beaten some tough, tough guys, but you can see that, you know, Rico Rodriguez is just another level. He's just an, he's another specimen or another species. Yeah, he's just out there. Ain't nothing but a thing, Mike. Ain't nothing yeah. but a thing. And, uh, you know, taking his time and uh, looking to get up or go for a Khmer here, and uh, he stands up. Wow, he stood up when he felt like he wanted to stand up. You know, just again, he looks like he can pretty much do what he wants to in this fight. You see a nice big knee right there. Uh, once again, Rico Rodriguez, not too terribly long ago, 330 pounds. He's really making his way back. Lost 70 pounds, well on his way uh, back to becoming uh, one of the best 
fighters in the world, in my opinion. I, I'm so excited to see what happens for the future of this kid. Right now, Chris Killian is getting a taste of what it's like to fight a world-class fighter. Yes, Rico's uh, trials and tribulations well documented. Mike, he's on a VH1 celebrity rehab. He's, you know, he's had some issues in his life, but he's uh, back doing his thing and trying to get to the top of the mountain. And uh, as you said, I mean, one time, baddest guy on the planet. Right you know, there. you would think that he hates people bringing that up, but he sees every time it's brought up as an opportunity to, to tell people his story and, and hopefully he can help others uh, avoid the pitfalls that he's had. Yeah, you, know, you see right here again, he's just kind of looking for something. You're not sure what it is, but you know, he's about two steps ahead of Chris Gillian right now and he has been this entire fight. If this were a chess match, he's he's well ahead of the game. Yeah, he is. Uh, Gillian pacing himself though. He's not uh, going out there trying to uh, just explode, which I think is a mistake. I think the best chance he has to beat Rico here is to catch him with some, catch him with a shot. See, not me. I think you, you, he, in his thinking, Rico's going to be out of shape, and you try to let this guy, uh, you know, get into a second, third round, and you got a better chance. But you see who's huffing and puffing. That's Gillian after being underneath Rico Rodriguez. Dave Selly said, standing them back up. And look how smooth he is on his feet. He, he is smooth. That's why they call him Suave, Mike. Right? Well, that's that's not why they call him Suave. <laughs> he just took through a right hand, and I, I think Gillian, man, he's he's hearing footsteps. You know, I mean, I, I just think he's he realizes that he's tasted, he's out of his league, and and, and uh, he kind of ducked his head right there. And oh, Rico throwing some good stuff for the fans, as you mentioned, a nice turn kick. I uh, just thought, well, and then a Superman punch. I and followed up with a kick and a knee. Look Are at you this kidding stuff, me? man. This is great. You know, you might look at Rico, you might think he's a little bit out of shape. Rico, at 300 pounds, can walk on his hands all around the, all around the arena. That was is, pretty impressive. He's not out of shape. You see how nimble he is. Chris Gillian, man, this is not, I hope we're not, you know, offending him by our commentary. He's coming out here and giving a game performance, but you're fighting uh, what many regard as one of the best fighters in the world, and you can tell he's just a little bit in awe of him. And, and you know, you saw it when, when uh, they were on their feet. He just didn't want to get hit by him. Yeah, he, he, he really didn't. Uh, man, that was a combination there by Rico, though. Spinning kick, uh, Superman punch, followed up with a tie kick. And, uh, wow, Rico just standing up again and just kind of having his way when he wants it. Standing up and taking some shots in the process. But we're looking right there. It's like a man among boys. And, boy, Rico, I think he's just about had enough. He said, you know, you've hit me a couple times, and now you made me mad. Man, so I'm gonna... <laughs> dropping those elbows, you know. Uh, uh, full mount, man. It's not a good spot for uh, Chris Gillian. No, it's not. 40 you, seconds left in the fight. You can ask Randy Couture. You know, Rico Rodriguez on top of him broke his face. Oh, oh, arm lock here, and that, I think, well, yeah, oh, that thing's on tight. Ow! That was a verbal tap right there. You saw Chris Gilliam was uh, ta saying tap, tap, tap verbally. I think it was on, he wasn't getting anywhere. How nimble is Rico at, at, at 260? My unbelievable. Well, yeah, <laughs> look how cool he is. He's been that way all weekend. Again, very uh, much a gentleman with his opponent, very much a gentleman that everybody's coming in contact with. And, and you see right there, that's why he is Rico Rodriguez. He's the best in the world. Uh, I fully, truly believe that. And uh, I think he will see greatness once again. And I'm just happy to be a part of his uh, road back to, uh, to greatness. See right here, uh, that's going to make it official there, Dave Selyestead. And a nice wave to the crowd there, Rico Rodriguez. Once again, your winner tonight in your main event. It's the Ultimate Combat Experience. I hope we get this guy back here in Utah again. This truly was an experience tonight, Absolutely. Mike. Are you Army strong? Find out what it takes to be a soldier in the U.S. Army at GoArmy.com. Chris Gillian, tonight you went up against, you know, one of the stars of mixed martial arts, Rico Rodriguez. He caught you in an arm bar. What was your thoughts on the fight? Um, you know, this is a, it's a big opportunity to fight Rico Rodriguez. He, he is the man. Um, I, you know, I like my chances coming in, though, and uh, I got caught in that arm bar, almost was able to roll out of it, and I just wasn't quick enough. He, he, has, he got the arm extended, and I couldn't, couldn't quite get the body shifted to go with it, so got caught. Well, he is one of the heavyweights out there that is very good at jiu-jitsu, very versed in the submission, Abu Dhabi champion, and he's probably tapped out more people than I can even think of. You held your own in there a little bit tonight, but what's your plans for the future, Chris? Um, I'm not done fighting. I'm going to keep going. Um, tonight was, you know, a personal test. I fought one of the best grapplers in the world, like you said. He won Abu Dhabi, and uh, you don't get better if you don't fight the best, and Rico's one of them guys, so I'm, I'm going to keep fighting him. All right, Chris, anyone you need to thank tonight? Um, yeah, I'd like to thank my sponsors, House of Pain, Toe to Toe. Um, gosh, Respect, Respect Fightwear, and uh, KO Dynasty, and uh, Diamond MMA. And, uh, you know, and anybody who's supported me, I appreciate the support. Thanks a lot.
All right, Chris, well, thanks for being part of the Ultimate Combat Experience. Hope to see you again soon. Thank you. I hope to come back. Great Clips is home of the $10 haircut. Also pick up $10 UCE tickets only at participating locations. Rico Rodriguez, another dominating performance and another arm bar. Yep, uh, first off, I want to thank God for me uh, making this fall possible. I want to thank Mike. I want to thank the troops for uh, protecting us and making this so special for us to go out and do this. And uh, I'm just happy to be here. Utah has treated me really well. And uh, Saab over there looking all good. And uh, everybody's just been great. I'm, I'm excited to come back. Uh, I'm really, uh, I'm upset that we didn't uh, pack this place out. So I'm a little sad about that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to Utah and I'm going to fight for a dollar. And I want everybody to come on back and watch another great fight. Rico Rodriguez is coming back to fight in Utah again. That's awesome, Rico. For a dollar, for one buck. I'm gonna fight somebody for a dollar. Wow. Rico, you're obviously on your way back to the top of the mountain. What are your plans in the future, though? You know, I'm just uh, blessed to fight in all these shows that they've been putting across the United States. I love the way they treat the fighters here. I mean, just everything's been fantastic. The, uh, the show, the production, uh, they treated me really well. Mike's been nice to me. Everybody's just been awesome. I met some new friends and, uh, you know, brought some new fans to the sport, and hopefully they'll keep coming back. I know all of Utah is excited for you to be here. It's like having a, you know, it is a celebrity here, and uh, the whole town's a buzzing. I can't wait to see you come back. Thanks for fighting in the show. Great performance tonight. Anyone you need to thank? Yeah, I want to thank Rob Garcia. Rob Garcia is one of the top trainers, trains to Oscar De La Hoya. He's been a guy that's been, you know, getting me back into shape, and I'm just uh, happy to have him in my corner. Well, you know, we've been busting our butt day in and day out, you know, getting up on the early morning runs and uh, doing three a days. We're on our way back to the top, and this is one step, one piece of the puzzle. Once again, uh, we'd just like to thank the troops. Hopefully they all come home safe, doing the job for protecting us over here while we're able to do what we love to do. So everyone have a good, safe evening. All right, Rob, you've definitely been getting him back in shape and back to the top of the mountain. Thanks for what you're doing and can't wait to see him back here again. All right, I love, I love Utah, I love coming out here and uh, hope to be involved in more uh, of Mike's productions out here. Rico Rodriguez shows that he is just another level. Chris Gillian's a, a good fighter. He's beating some tough guys out there, but uh, man, Rico just too much for him. Yeah, I don't want to say Rico toyed with him, but he kind of did. I think Rico just paced himself and set up what he wanted and got him more and more happy with his performance tonight. Everyone in Salt Lake was definitely happy to see him. I, I'm just happy to have him here and again. He made a promise he's going to come back and fight again for a buck. You know why? Because that's the kind of guy he is. He just, he's a good guy, man, and I can't wait to have him be more involved in this show. He wants to be more involved in the Ultimate Combat, and hey, man, I'll take it any day of the week. You guys are a great guy. The Ultimate Combat is back. We're back in action next week, so uh, don't go anywhere. We got more of this stuff, right? So thank you so much. We'll see you next week on the Ultimate Combat Experience.